And so I guess appropriately, the first thing that I would love to ask you is, you know, from the intimate venues that are kind of the hallmark of the underground soul movement to this, how does it differ for you as an artist being on stage or being a part of this machine? Um, well, I've actually played this theater several times before this tour. And um, the more I play in venues this size, the more comfortable it gets and the more intimate it gets, actually, you know. But um, I toured with Earth, Wind & Fire, Rufus and Shaka Khan back in 2001 and we were playing arenas. So that was a really huge difference from what I was accustomed to initially, you know, uh, in terms of doing shows. And that was pretty nerve wracking at first because I, I went on first, so I had to deal with people not getting there, you know, until Rufus went on and people walking in and out and major amounts of seats that's just like open and then the size of the venue, the echo and delay, you know, and everything comes right back to you and it's like, wow, and you can't see anything, you know. So um, I'm getting more accustomed to it, but this size venue and this tour, it's, it's pretty fine because I've done these sizes before with other artists that I've opened for, but um, yeah, the arena tour was insane. <laughs> Definitely receiving. The, the notion of being in cities that love your music, like you automatically know you're going to come in and get that appreciation and that love. Right. And you know, when they announced you before your set started, there was a great segment of the population that was like, yay, Rasan, you know, and, and you're the first of three on the bill. So what is that like? In, in terms of being a part of a machine like this, you know, we joke, but also being very appreciated in the midst of it all. It's a blessing, and um, I always appreciate the opportunity to sing, you know, on a microphone that's available for me to sing, regardless of who I'm touring with, regardless of me going on first or second or last, it doesn't really matter for me. And um, it's all a part of the process, really, you know, and I don't really have expectations of my career you know, and the level of fame or success that I achieve, I don't really think on those terms, you know, as long as I'm able to sing, I'm good. I thought you would know what I've been through. This notion of commercial music versus the underground movement and, and how people expect you to maybe even present yourself on stage um, as a person who I think kind of moves between the two. <laughs> you know, do you have people, they joke, they call me part of the like backpacker granola crowd. Mm -hmm. So do you find that there are people who um, give you very different energy oh, when they find out that you're a part of something like this tour? Yeah, um, I find that the energies tend to waver simply because people expect a certain performance style vocally and visually when when it's tag neo so you know afro you know the applejack hat and all that stuff and then there's the crowd that is very adult contemporary you know and they want a smooth night evening in the seats you know while they watch a show you know and like you said i go in and out of all of them all of the genres I like the fact that, you know, I'm consistent in uh, doing what I do, which separates me from everybody else. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I <laughs> will purposely do opposite of what everybody else is doing, whether the impact that's made is a positive one or a negative one, because I don't want to blend it. This industry that is designed to make people very competitive um, and, and that, you know, kind of crabs in a barrel image that we hear so often, particularly among black artists 
who feel like we're struggling for this very small sliver of something. How important is it to you to have a sister? Yeah, because she, she refers to you as her brother. Totally. Um, you know, who who supports you in, in that way, in doing the exact same thing that you do. It's comforting, and it makes it a lot easier to exist in the industry, you know, because it is so doggy dog and so bottom line about money and who's at the top of the charts and it is very competitive and I'm not really competitive in this game because everybody's uniquely talented and has well they should have their own voice and their own style you know what I mean yeah and like her you know she's a unique vocalist and there's only one Layla Hathaway and there will always be only one and you know, the same goes for me. It's like, there's only one Rasan Patterson, you know, and there's only one D'Angelo, 